Now, this week uh, marks the 75th anniversary of the end of the war in Europe. As part of the commemorations, the contrib contribution of thousands of people from Caribbean nations who volunteered to serve with the British Armed Forces is to be marked with a permanent memorial. Our correspondent, Sean Lloyd, has been speaking to some of those involved. Her report was filmed before the lockdown was imposed. Albert Jarrett, aged 18, one of around 10,000 people who left the Caribbean to join the war effort. We were needed in the height of the war. We, we, our service were needed. And, and we were more anxious to give our service to the country that protected us, us because we were British citizens. And this was our mother country, we were told. The place they set sail for was very different to home, on board ships that were cramped and uncomfortable. In those days, ships had to move in convoy, because if they are not in convoy, don't forget the German U-boat is going to get rid of them at the time, you see. And for that reason, 23 long days on the sea before we get there. And he came here, and I remember when I... When we got to Bristol, I saw, this, I saw the promise done. <laughs> what was known at the time as a colour bar had restricted recruitment to the armed forces, but by 1941, advertisements in newspapers invited people from the West Indies to join the RAF. The contribution and sacrifice of all those from the Caribbean who have and continue to serve the country will now be commemorated here at the National Memorial Arboretum. The campaign to raise the half a million pounds needed is being led by a former serviceman. Up until now, uh, a lot of people have the perception or misconception that all uh, people of colour, shall we say, did in the war was dog trenches. It's not the case. A lot of um, people were pilots, navigators, engineers, the lot, and they won a lot of gallantry medals for their service. But that story is not been told, nowhere near as widely as it should be. So this monument will tell that story. Clay models give a sense of how the finished sculpture will look. An imposing nine metres wide and carved from stone, it features palm trees and four bronze figures to represent the different branches of the armed forces. I am so pleased about it because at first it, it seemed so shocking to me that something the, the, this government has have never done nothing to show the, show the appreciation. One of the few surviving veterans of the Second World War, 95-year-old Albert hopes he will see a monument during his lifetime. Sean Lloyd, BBC News.